Hey there, welcome back to Manatic Stringworks. Glad to have you here. So please remember to like and subscribe for more video content. All right, so on the workbench today, we have this nice Blueberry Epiphone 335. The owner has dropped it off with me to have a look at. A couple of things he's not happy with. One is the action, the string height. Let's see, it's pretty high. And I noticed that the action at the first fret is really high as well. So the combination of these two things is making it so that the guitar plays out of tune. So the owner finds that he really can't play fretted chords or even single notes that they sound just a little bit out of tune, which would make sense. And he's a little frustrated because he did just have this set up by a large big box guitar store. <laughs> and I'm a little concerned that maybe it was set up with an action this high because it's hiding some other issues with the frets. So I think the first thing I'm going to check with a fret rocker is I want to see if there are any high frets along here first. So let's have a look at that. All right, so just using a fret rocker, so a piece of machine steel that has sides of various lengths, so you can span the frets. So you always want three points of contact, and then you rock it along, right? So usually when there's a high fret or an issue, we're talking right around, you know, anywhere from the 10th to the 15th fret. Let's have a look. So we'll start right down here. Mm. See, I hear a little rocking already right here on the third fret. Okay, we're a little bit of an issue there. Okay. Oh. Right here in the 13th fret. I hope you can hear that, eh? <laughs> I'm not exaggerating that for effect. I'm just so. And again, the few, the few spots are generally here, right? On the treble side. Not really finding anything. Oh, right there, the 12th. So the 12th, there's an exception right there. Okay, so there's a few spots that have some rocking now. Now, the frets not being perfectly level could be one of the reasons why the action was set a little higher than normal. So then you wouldn't feel the string buzz out. So again, here's the 12th fret we had an issue. When I fret notes ahead of it, doesn't fret out. Now if we drop the action down, it might, right? So the next step is to check and see what the string height is. So I'll use a string gauge. So normally on a guitar like this, I like to see 564 on the bass side, 
and 4 64 on the treble. And of course, using a tunematic bridge, we can only adjust the height on the treble and the bass. Right? So, I like to check at the 17th fret. And I know Gibsons, you know, people like to check at the 12th, but it doesn't really matter because you change the height here. <laughs> you go to 4 and 3. Well, we're going to go to 5 and 4 as we move higher up the fingerboard because the strings get higher naturally, right? So, I'll start with 5 here at the 17th fret. You can hear that, eh? It's much higher. Yeah. So let's try six sixty fours. I'm scraping there, scraping there. So it looks like we've got something higher than 664 on the base side, so probably like 7, and then 664 the rest of the way. Now I'll just check that visually with a ruler using the 64 gauge here on the side. And I'll just bring in a little bit of light and a magnifier. <laughs> and let's flip this over and have a look. Oh yeah, so here we're almost 764 on the base side and we are 664 on the treble side here. So again, I'd like to see 5 and 4, so we're dropping this down 264. Of course we might not be able to do that if we have a fret issue. <laughs> which is a whole other operation and if we do have frets that are buzzing out when we drop it down to that desired height then I'll have to talk to the owner about uh, maybe doing a fret job spot leveling but this is a brand new guitar just purchased recently so I might want to recommend to him that he take it back <laughs> and have that work done but let's see um, where we are with the nut now So I had noticed that this first string action really high. I mean, if I push down on the third fret and then finger the first fret string, it should be just like touching. But let's not guess at it. Let's start with a measurement. So 22 thousandths would be the high end for a guitar. So if I place that under So if I strum, yeah, well, it's actually a little lower than I would have thought. I guess it might be because I haven't seen a guitar this high in a while. Most of the guitars I've been working on recently have been 18 thousandths. <laughs> Let's try that. That's where I'd like to see it. So if I put that feeler gauge underneath and strum and it doesn't buzz, that means there's room above it. So you know, this the, the treble side's not too bad, I guess. It's right about 18. Second string could come down a touch. Third string, just a bit, maybe. Fourth string. Well, again, not, not horrible. Maybe it's a bit of an optical illusion. <laughs> it seems really high, especially the E string. I would definitely lower the first and second strings. Maybe just touch on the first, second, third. But this also could be a result of the extreme height of the string. So. If I push down on these strings a little bit to simulate, you know, lowering the action, you can see it lower, even up here, right? 
All right, so next step. All right, so next step is I'm going to lower the action here. And like I said earlier, I'd like to see 464s on the treble side and 564s on the bass side. So I'm going to use a gauge. Here's a 5, here's a 4. We'll check it that way. So I'll put the 4 under. So we're going to go 17th fret right here. Lots of clay. We're going to start to lower this. A little more. Again, just do eighth of a you know eighth of a turn at a time. That's pretty good. I'll go just a bit more. I find using these gauges helps me get there quicker and then I'll use the ruler after to fine tune it. So again we'll do 564 so on the 17th fret here. There's a lot there. Pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there for a moment. And we'll take the string gauge ruler. Have a look. Okay, that's a lot better. Yeah, so now we're at four on the treble side and uh, maybe like four and a half there. I could raise that just a little bit. All right, that's good. Okay, now we have to tune it up. And remember, when you do any adjustments on your guitar, string height, neck relief, nut action, whatever, <laughs> always have the guitar tuned to the pitch that your customer, your player, the owner is using. So if it's standard or drop D or whatever, an open tuning, if that's how they play this guitar all the time, do all your adjustments in that tuning. So we drop the bridge down so it's made everything flat. Alright, so I'll go through the strings. So I've just tuned it up and like I said, the owner bought this guitar not too long ago and it had it set up at the guitar store. I don't know if they stress the strings a lot or what type of strings are on here. I think he said they're just Tadarios, but I'll give them a little stretch as well and if the owner hasn't been playing the guitar a lot which he said he hadn't been the, you know the strings haven't been worked in so giving them a good stretch will also help with the tuning stability so surprising how much you can pull out of these strings usually a new set of strings I can pull out almost a full tone definitely a semitone. So again, like I said, I don't know how used these are, but they feel pretty darn new. Alright, let's see if that did anything. Yeah, it flattened it a little bit. Not a lot. Okay, 
I didn't show it earlier on, but I did check the neck relief when the guitar came into the shop and I put it on the bench. But I was pretty happy with the neck relief the way it was. Now, lower the strings a little bit. Well, the ten thousandths is slipping under there, just barely scraping. That's pretty nice. Could probably put a little bit of relief in the neck, but I think I'm going to try the guitar. Here's eight thousandths, just for the heck of it. I have to get a new feeler gauge. <laughs> this edge feels uh, rough. Should measure it. Yeah, I'll probably put a little bit of relief in it. Let's see how it plays first. Okay, so we're tuned up. We've lowered the string action to where it should be. Um, it sounds good like that. So just on the bench lying down, I'm just going to test each of the frets, each of the notes at the frets, and see if we get any buzzing. So no frets buzzing, you know, I wasn't pressing down crazy hard, which you shouldn't be doing. But if you play it in the playing position, it'll give you the same result. Like I've said many times, you can do it in this position afterwards, and I've never seen there be an issue. If it's laying flat on the bench, and you didn't have any fret buzz, you're not going to have any in the playing position. Again, you're not pressing crazy hard down. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next step here. All right, so the owner was complaining that he didn't find the guitar stayed in tune. He didn't find that it played in tune. <laughs> so fretted notes or chords. So, when the, we've adjusted the height of the strings. We haven't done anything with the nut, and that would be the last thing we would do. The neck relief is nice. There's no open string buzzing. So, I'm happy with that, where it is. It's just around nine or ten thousandths. So, really, I'm going to check the intonation. And by how we do that, of course, is we make sure we're in tune. Touch flat. Oh, he's a little sharp. Again, intonation is you know, a relative thing. You're going to get it close. It's never going to be perfect. But it shouldn't be that bad that you, you know, you really notice it. You get it close and it'll be good. Okay, so let's check. So we do the open string, we do the harmonic, and the fretted note. So that's sharp. Not bad, a little sharp. Again, you don't press down really hard, just press down enough to get the note. Tune that up a bit. sharp in our tuning. Get a little sharp. D is nice. A is a little sharp in tuning. A little flat there. That's pretty good. Okay, so a couple of the strings are intonated okay, you know, 
three or four of them are a little bit sharp it looks like so that shouldn't be too hard to fix we do have some intonation in the saddle so I'll go through these strings and try and intonate them a little bit before that though I want to show you something else on the fretboard so another way to look and see how your guitar is intonated is over the whole fretboard as much as you can so if I play a D You know, that's not bad, it's showing a little bit flat. Right? If I play a note at the 7th fret, which in this case is an A, you can see that it's a little bit sharp. And if I play that same note at the 19th fret, that's pretty good. So, a little bit sharp to, you know, pretty much there so the intonation isn't bad over the fretboard on that string at least right? let's try another one let's go to the A string the 12th fret is pretty good so now we're gonna go on the 7th here so that's an E it's a little bit sharp like we saw with the D string we'll go to the 19th the octave it's right on so it tells me that the fretboard is pretty much in tune meaning that the fret slots are where they should be, you know, the frets are where they should be. One last thing is we'll look at is the first fret. So with the guitar in tune, of course, if we check the first fret, so again, tune it up a bit, this should be, right, a B flat or an A sharp. So it's a little sharp, you can see it, right? So here we're a D, well this should be an E flat or a D sharp, it's a little sharp. G, yeah, sharp. Sharp. <laughs> so all the notes are sharp. Oh, I didn't do the E, did I do the E? Okay, the E is a little too sharp already. So sharp. So that first fret, now that could be, again, the height of the strings, and I think I will address the nut slot a little bit. But in general, it seems like the intonation over the length of the fretboard isn't bad at all. So I think with adjusting the nut slot, we should get a little better intonation, and of course intonating the strings with the bridge. So I'll get on to that. So with the Gibson Tunematic Style Bridge, your intonation adjustments here at the saddles with these screws at the front. And so, like anything, you move the saddles front to back. So if you're sharp, you would move the saddle back to lengthen the string. If you're flat, you shorten the string, so move the saddle forward. And again, it's little baby steps. So if I look at each one of these, we have lots of room. We're close to the front here. We're almost at the front here. We're almost at the back there on the third string. We have room. So one of the things, if you run out of room, you can flip these, unscrew it completely, and then flip that saddle around facing the other way, which gives you more room. It's not ideal, but Let's see if we can deal with the intonation the way it is. So if we look at this E string, the intonation is a little sharp. The tuning is a touch sharp. But again, the string is going to vary, right? So again, it's not going to be perfect. How hard you press down makes a difference too. But in this case, that's pretty tuned in the open tuning. It's a little bit sharp. So taking a flat screwdriver, a small one, right? So it's a little sharp, so we want to lengthen the string a little bit. So if, and again, these aren't the best saddles in the world, to be honest. You know, I prefer the fender bridges. A lot better for adjusting. So I'm just going to turn this a few times to lengthen the saddle. And it's it's really just trial and error. Yeah. 
and it's still a little bit, so I'll do that for each string. So here's the B string. Looks good. Alright, well, let's keep doing the rest of them. Alright, so the intonation's done. It's nice. I'm going to show you one other thing I like to check. So right down here, so where the string comes off the back of the saddles, you have to make sure that the back of the string doesn't touch the saddle. So if you just take a piece of paper, thin paper, and if you can pass it underneath there, without it touching, then you're good. And I usually find when there's a problem, it's usually here on the first string. But we're good. So the way you fix that, if let's say the strings were touching the back of the saddle, you would raise the tailpiece or lower it, depending on what you need to do. Also noticing that, um, you know, this looks like a nice break angle here. It's not too steep, but not too shallow, so I wouldn't touch that too much. Some people like to play around with that, try and get it steeper or really shallow, and maybe it affects tone, not quite sure. Alright, let's look at the nut. Alright, so as we looked at a little earlier, I think we can lower the first string action here, sorry, the sixth string. <laughs> down. So I want to see it around 18 thousandths. So we do that by releasing the tension on the string. And I'm going to use a nut file here. So the 46 thousandth for the sixth string. And what I like to do is put in the slot. So this is going to open it up a little bit. I like to try and angle the nut slot towards the tuning post as well. So I like to count, I'll do like 10 or 12 strokes. One, two, three, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That way I know where I'm going with this. Put the string back in. Tune it up to pitch. And we'll check it again. It's close, maybe a little bit more. Not much. So make sure you got it in the right slot. <laughs> One, two, three, four. string and I start to hear it on the gauge it means you know, pretty much there so I like that if I do this fifth string I could use some as well all right I'll do those all right so the intonation is good string heights nice the action at the first fret is great now the last thing to do is check the pickup height so using my gauge I have this set at 1 8 for the bass side and 330 seconds or 664 fourths. <laughs> so you could use the string gauge as well for the treble side. So fretting the last fret, run the gauge. Yeah, that pickup's really close. I can't even get it underneath the gauge. We'll go on the bass side, same thing, same thing, same thing. So that's another reason that perhaps the client was not liking the sound because when the pickup is too close it can interfere with the natural harmonic of the string the resonance so I'll lower these down quite a bit and I'll bring them up gradually 
So, the, you know, 1 8 and 3 30 seconds, those are starting points. Every guitar, every pickup is different. So, give yours a try. Well, while I'm here, I'll check the tuning machines and make sure that everything's tight. Because that sometimes is a frustrating cause of tuning issues. You just don't know why it's not keeping tune. Also, in the winter, when guitars dry out a bit, they tend to shrink and these get loose. So, tightening them up periodically, I would definitely check them every string change. Flip the guitar over. And I'll just look at the screws. And just nip them up a bit. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this guitar. It's really a pretty paint job. Blueberry Epiphone. So, pretty sure the owner's going to like this setup a lot better. It's already playing nicer. Now, one of the things I might suggest to the client is in the future trying 9 gauge strings. They might like those better. Anyways, thanks for watching. Keep watching, keep liking. I hope you subscribe if you haven't. Stay tuned for the next one. Take care, stay safe. Bye for now.